Love it or hate it, the Black Cell Launcher is one of the most dominant launchers any Call of Duty game has ever seen. The fact that it lacks a free fire capability but is still very much feared speaks volumes about it. So the Black Cell is unlocked at level 13, which in my opinion is extremely low given its power. The Black Cell can only lock onto enemy score streaks, whether that be in the air or on the ground. It cannot be free fired like its counterpart, the XM53. Undoubtedly, one of its biggest attributes is the fact that it has a whopping four rockets at its disposal, which can literally decimate every streak in the entire game save for one. And that's no mistake. Out of the 16 score streaks that can be shot down, the Black Cell Launcher can destroy 15 of them in one life. But we'll talk more about that in just a second. So let me discuss a few things you may or may not have known about the Black Cell Launcher. First of all, I want to point out what most people seem to take for granted, or they don't even realize is provided. When you zoom in with the Black Cell and lock onto an enemy streak, a vast array of information is provided to you. For example, as soon as this hater gets called in, I lock onto it. The top number is the duration the streak has left, which in this case is about 38 seconds. Now this can be useful to have so you don't waste your time and ammo on a streak that's about to be blown up or leave the screen. Of note, it seems to be slightly glitched. Whatever the display time says, you have to add 5 seconds to it. For some reason, when the countdown hits 0, an additional 5 seconds pops up. More importantly, the bottom number is how many rockets you need to destroy the streak. And in this case, you need 3 rockets to take out the hater. This information is actively updated, so if someone damages the streak, the number will update to show the appropriate number of rockets you need to destroy it. This is a great method to determine when to take that final shot. For instance, if you're going for diamond launchers and you need to take out sentry guns, guardians, or even a Cerberus, it'd be wise to wait until that number reads 1 to ensure you land the final blow. The lock on screen also has a really nifty feature of indicating to you when a teammate is also trying to lock onto the same streak. In prior COD games, there was nothing worse than taking the time to swap to your launcher, find the streak that's active, lock onto it, only to have your teammate gank it straight from under your nose. Treyarch must have realized this because there's now a warning that is fairly evident when a teammate of yours is also actively locking on. It simply reads, teammate lock on. If you happen to see this, that usually means they've got the jump on you and you should probably save your shot. I'm sure most of you know this already, but if there's one tip I can give you for the Black Cell Launcher, it's to learn how to reload cancel. This can drastically cut the time required to destroy streaks, making this powerful launcher even more potent. And luckily, it's extremely easy to pull off. Once you get the hang of it, it'll almost be like second nature. So what you want to look at is the bottom right hand of your screen where your ammo is displayed. As soon as you shoot, the number one turns to a zero. What we're looking for is that zero to turn back into a one. As soon as it does, that's when you can reload cancel. To achieve this, all you do is hit the triangle button on the PlayStation 4 twice in rapid succession, or on the Xbox as it's more commonly referred to as YYing. So by doing this, you cut out the remainder of the reload animation. As you can see here, from the moment that zero turns back into a one, there's 1.467 seconds of useless animation until we can get fully scoped back in. So by doing the YY technique, most of this time is removed. To further clarify how effective this can be, watch here as I destroy a hater, which takes three shots, remember, without the YY technique. It takes 10.733 seconds to successfully land all three rockets. Now let's do the same scenario using the same measurement techniques, but with the addition of the reload canceling technique. Now take note that I'm very slow at this. I'm sure many people can do it far faster than me, but even so, I managed to clock in at 9.55 seconds. When your team is depending on you to take down streaks, every second counts. And this reload canceling technique can prove very useful. One great use for the Black Cell is in the safeguard mode. For some reason, I rarely see people use launchers against the robot, and I'm honestly not sure why. If you successfully land all four rockets at the safeguard robot, he'll be disabled. You can also utilize the reload canceling technique I just discussed to aid you in this as well. And you get a whopping 150 points for disabling the robot. Now if you've ever played Safeguard, you'll know that score streaks are incredibly hard to achieve due to the extremely low score streak points you receive for killing people. You have to get a Merciless Medal, which is 10 kills in a row just to earn a UAV. That's absolutely ridiculous. Needless to say, I highly recommend bringing a Black Cell with you when you're playing Safeguard. And in addition, if you have it, the Scavenger Perk. If you weren't aware, each Scavenger Pack will replenish one rocket for your launcher. Now hopefully other teammates will also be attacking the robot as well so it won't take the full four rockets to disable it. In fact, you can hold your lock on in place until its health gets just right so that you ensure you receive the final blow. Sadly though, the lock on screen does not display how many rockets it requires to kill the robot. Instead, you can rely on his health bar to know when to shoot that final shot. 
One thing that many people don't seem to realize is that the blast radius of a launcher's rocket can annihilate unsuspecting enemies. So for example, if you're locked onto the safeguard robot and fire your rocket and there just so happens to be enemies escorting it as well, they can potentially die. It makes for a great kill cam or a final kill cam if you can time it right. It also works like this for any streak you're locked onto. Or if some newbie booby just so happens to be dumb enough to walk in the line of your fire when you're locked onto something, they'll intercept the rocket and get cold cocked into oblivion. The Black Cell, like other weapons in the game, can also be leveled up. This is achieved by either killing enemies or by its main intention, which is destroying streaks. Either way, once you hit the maximum level for launcher, which is 11, you can prestige it. This gives you the option to add on your clan tag or the kill counter. But take note, the kill counter only displays enemies you've killed and not how many score streaks you destroyed. I've killed 277 people with my Black Cell, which can give you an indication of how much I use it. Personally, I think it would be really cool to see the insane amount of score streaks people have destroyed. It makes zero logical sense to display a player kill counter on a vehicle lock-on only weapon. Regardless of its ability to kill people, that's the exact opposite of its intended purpose. And speaking of its intended purpose, let's discuss destroying streaks. This thing is literally the definition of anti-score streak. As of the day of this video being made, all of this data was hand tested by myself and is accurate. Instead of showing you each and every score streak being taken out, I've made a table showing the appropriate data. I will show you a few clips for certain emphasis though. So these are the first 9 streaks that are able to be shot down. I provided the score you received for taking them out, as well as the number of rockets required. The only one that surprised me on this list was the dart. This sucker is very tricky to hit since it's small and fast moving, but it appears to have a flare as well. Despite the lock on screen stating it only takes one rocket to destroy, it always took at least two for me. Sometimes it flew so fast that the rocket wouldn't even land. And by the way, you can tell if a streak has a flare as it will divert the rocket away and explode in a blue explosion. So now let's look at the remaining eight streaks. This is where things get hairy. The first thing you should note is the score that you receive for most of these is absolutely wank on the cob. For instance, you get less points for destroying the hater than you do the talent, despite the hater taking one more rocket. Likewise, it's almost laughable that you only receive 125 points for destroying the power core. That's the same as you got for destroying a care package, remember? The only score streak to exceed 150 points for destroying it is the mothership. Now a mothership can take out 10 to 20 enemies in the right hands, and it takes 6 rockets to shoot down, but yet you only receive 200 points. As a comparison, the counter UAV only took 1 rocket and you receive 100 points. That doesn't make much sense to me. I was surprised to find out that the talent has a flare. I swear I've taken down some of these in one rocket before without it being weakened, so I'm convinced this streak was buffed recently. As you can see here, the first rocket clearly gets diverted by a flare. Speaking of buffs, the Wraith was recently buffed as well. If you weren't aware, you used to be able to destroy the Wraith in one hit, which was frustrating beyond belief. The Wraith has a little drone that follows it that absorbs a rocket. Prior to the recent buff, if you shot the Wraith as soon as it appeared on the map, you'd take it out before the drone appeared and the poor little baby drone would come flying in, sad as can be, looking for his now deceased mother before exploding with a broken heart. But with that said, if the drone was allowed to come in, it would take two rockets to destroy. One for the drone, and one for the wraith. Now however, the baby drone flies in first. Not only this, the rocket that hits the drone does not count towards the wraith as it did before. So despite the lock on screen saying that the wraith takes two rockets, it really takes three since one goes towards the drone. In addition to this buff, they also gave the race some wicked maneuvering skills. It cloaks and uncloaks and dodges left and right, often escaping even the lock-on mechanism. The Raps was also recently buffed from three rockets to four, as well as having a brief period of invincibility as soon as it enters the map so you can't get a jump on it anymore. I wanted to mention the power core briefly as well. This sucker did some weird things in testing. It can be destroyed in three rockets, but more often than not, it mysteriously develops flares. So watch here as a fresh power core is placed. The lock on screen says 3 rockets to destroy. My first one connects and it changes to 2. But my next rocket is hit by a flare. I try again and another flare deploys. Likewise, my fourth rocket also gets diverted by a flare. I then ask to be killed, go back to it and successfully take it out in 2 more rockets. So that particular power core took 6 rockets to take out. So now I try it again. So here's a brand new, freshly placed power core. This time, there's no flares whatsoever and I'm easily able to destroy the power core in three rockets. Very strange. Lastly, the mothership was recently buffed as well. It used to only take four rockets to destroy, and you have to destroy the mothership by compartments. It used to be that you hit two in the back and then you had to hit the center portion twice. Now, however, they made it take six rockets. So you have to hit the back two compartments with three rockets and then the center portion three times as well. 
Noticeably absent from this list are the Lightning Strike and the Rolling Thunder. As far as I can tell, neither of these can be shot down. You can target the Rolling Thunder and you can actually get the rockets launched towards them, but I've never successfully had one connect and destroy it. The drones drop way too fast for the rockets to keep up. One last thing I wanted to talk about was the class setup. I highly recommend that everyone has their own personal anti-air class made just in case the opportunity should arise. Even if you're an amazing player, there's no doubting the fact that you could be tossed into a game against six pub stomping wiswogs that have a hater, a raps, a wraith, and many other goodies ripe for the shooting. My personal favorite class is an LMG with FMJ and extended mags. FMJ on an LMG can decimate any score streak in the game in a matter of seconds, which is why I also suggest extended mags. For perks, in Tier 1 you absolutely need Blind Eye. Blind Eye prevents automated aerial streaks from attacking you and conceals you from the vision of player-controlled aerial streaks. Keep in mind that if a player controls a streak, they can still see you without the targeting assistance, just not as easily. In Tier 2, you'll need Cold-Blooded. The ground-based twin to Blind Eye, this does a whole slew of things. Most importantly for the Black Cell at least, it causes ground-based streaks to ignore you. For example, there's nothing nicer than walking straight up to a sentry gun or a Cerberus for an easy shot thanks to Cold-Blooded. In Tier 3, you absolutely need Engineer. I already did a thorough review of the Engineer perk itself, but it basically allows you to see every score streak in the game in a wonderfully lit orange color, both through walls as well as on the minimap, and this is crucial for finding and destroying all streaks easily. After equipping the Black Cell Launcher itself, this will leave you with 3 points, and you can do with these as you please. One option is to add a wild card for perk 2 and add Scavenger. As I mentioned, scavenger packs replenish the Black Cell's ammo. You could also add a Tactical or Lethal to also replenish via scavenger, such as Smoke. But that specific class is just for emergencies only, or for if you're grinding for launcher camos and hear that an enemy has called in a streak that you have to destroy, such as a Talon. As soon as you hear that announcement, switch to the class, seek out the score streak, and destroy it with little effort. Also, don't be afraid to slap a Black Cell launcher on a run and gun class as well. I love to run a Black Cell on my rushing assault rifle or SMG classes. I typically have two attachments, the Engineer and Scavenger perks, and a Tactical, and the rest of the points are up for grabs. This gives me a well-balanced class that allows me to perform a variety of things in a game. For instance, I can slay people efficiently with this loadout, while at the same time I can also easily destroy any incoming streaks should the opportunity arise. The ability to be both a high-killing slayer as well as a teammate assisting streak destroyer is essential for a well-balanced team. I find that when playing solo, my team wins far more games when I play both roles, as opposed to just being a slayer and allowing myself and my teammates to be lit up by a bombardment of streaks that no one bothers to destroy. As for a specialist ability or weapon to complement the Black Cell, there's really only one true match, and that's Seraph's combat focus. I did a very in-depth video on this one already, which I'll link in the description. But briefly, you'll want to wait for some of the frequent appearing streaks, such as the UAV, the counter UAV, or even the care package. Once you acquire combat focus, lock onto the first streak and shoot the rocket. As soon as you shoot, then activate the combat focus ability. This way, you won't waste the meter by having it drain while you're locking on. If you can shoot down three or more streaks with combat focus active, and you run lower streaks, you'll likely get them all immediately. So now the most important question comes into play. Is the Black Cell Launcher overpowered? Is the 4 rocket capacity a bit too much? Considering all that I've talked about in this video, the Black Cell has very few cons to using it. As I mentioned, every single streak in the game that can be destroyed can be done so in one single Black Cell, save for the Mothership. I'd say a majority of the community currently thinks the Black Cell is hurting the game. By allowing everyone to easily take out streaks in the game, it lowers the efficiency of the score streaks, and it makes a lot of the harder to earn streaks essentially useless. For instance, being able to take out a hater in 9 seconds flat, that's a brutal blow to the person that called it in. Earning some of these higher up streaks is no easy task. You have to have at least some skill to do this, but taking them out with the Black Cell takes practically no skill at all. Personally, I never would run launchers in prior Call of Duty games. Now, however, I've literally got a Black Cell on at least half of my classes, mostly because it helps my teammates get the win. I have a feeling that if the Black Cell should get nerfed, people will go back to playing selfish again, paying no attention to any of these streaks that are put into the air, which ultimately leads to rage quits. Now one common argument I've seen for a launcher nerf is that the Black Cell basically negates some of the perks. For example, the Ghost perk. You can spend a point on a perk that partially counters UAVs, or you could spend a point on a launcher that not only completely counters UAVs, but also counters nearly all score streaks. The same applies to the Black Hat, which is severely nerfed from the beta. It takes two Black Hats and a long time to take out most higher up streaks. So you could spend two points on a couple of Black Hats, or you could spend one point on a launcher. As for the topic of pub stomping players complaining that their score streaks get taken out way too easily, I agree that this is the case. 
However, it should be noted that the design of score streaks aren't there to get you kills. They're there as an added bonus to supplement your weapon kills. Some people seem to forget that this game is meant to be about gunfights, not spawn trapping an entire team with score streaks just to inflate your KD ratio. I'm definitely glad they made pretty much every score streak destroyable. Well, except the hater. I think they need to return that to where it can't be shot down and just increase the score to achieve it. Now with that said, I wouldn't be opposed to some sort of slight adjustment to the black cell. Whether that be by making it a higher level unlock, such as level 50 or higher, or perhaps a reduction of rockets from 4 to 3. Or, I guess as they have been doing, they could increase the rockets it takes to bring down some of the higher up streaks. In Black Ops 2, the higher end streaks needed 3 plus rockets to be brought down, and nobody had a 4 round rocket launcher. Something like this would still mean a good support player can shoot stuff down, but not have it handed to them on a plate before the score streak can actually do anything. This might be the first Call of Duty where I see teams taking down score streaks consistently. So what's your stance on the Black Cell? Do you think it should be nerfed or kept the way it is currently? Let me know in the comments. Hopefully you learned at least one or two things about the Black Cell from this review. Even if you didn't, I highly encourage you to be a team player and help take down streaks when the opportunity arises. The Black Cell was literally made for it.